Hey, Wagwan. It's Mr. Garth Reed here. And today we're going to be looking at a Cape Integrated Mathematics past paper question. All right, from the May June 2019 paper. And we're focusing on question 5C. Okay. And we're dealing with module three, which is calculus in the syllabus. Okay. Now I'd recognize that many students have difficulty answering some of these questions all right so we're going to look at it the question says the figure below not drawn to scale depicts the contour of the ocean bed just off a certain island a boat stationed at the point labeled o is exactly above a point a all right and it says that marks the entrance to an underwater cave at the ocean bed okay and it says relative to the origin o the contour of the seabed can be modeled as a function h all right so h is a function of x is equal to x minus 2 all cubed divided by e to the power of minus x where h is the depth in meters of the seabed below the surface of the sea and x is the horizontal distance in kilometers from o all right, good. Part one says, over here we have the questions. It, part one says, obtain the derivative of x minus two all cubed, the numerator of h of x. Part two says, you are to calculate the limit of h of x as x approaches two, and you are to interpret your answer. And part three, if the derivative h prime of x is given by, h prime of x is equal to x minus two r squared, multiplied by x minus one times e to the power x, find the slope of the seabed at the point A. Good. So let us now start with part one of this question. Yes, so let us now start off with the first question which says we are to obtain the derivative of x minus two r cubed, which is the numerator of the function h of x. All right, so let's look at it. Part one solution. All right, now before I get into the derivative, let me just remind you. So recall that whenever we differentiate with respect to x, a function f of x, all right? Let's say I'm differentiating a function f of x with respect to x, and it is being raised to the power of n, then that is going to be equal to n multiplied by the base, all right? That function f of x, you decrease the power by one, so you get n minus one, but you must multiply by the derivative of the function. All right, so that's f prime of x. Good. With that being said, let us now calculate the derivative of x minus two r cubed. All right, so d by dx of x minus two r cubed. Once again, if you're not familiar with this notation d by dx, this is what we call the differential operator, which means that we are differentiating this function here with respect to the variable x. Okay, so following this rule that I've written above, and following that rule, you carry down the three, multiply by the function x minus two, all right, decrease the power by one, so you get three minus one, which is two, all right, but you must multiply by the derivative of what is inside the brackets. If you differentiate x with respect to x, you get one, and if you differentiate the constant negative two, you get zero. All right, so the derivative is really one, which will still give us back a three times x minus two all squared. Okay, good. So we can leave it right there. You do not need to expand the x minus two all squared. All right, you can just leave it as it is. Good. So we are now finished with part one of the question. Let me just take that off. We're finished with part one. Now we're going to do part two, which says calculate the limit of h of x 
as x approaches 2. All right, let's do that. Solution, part 2 solution. It says we have to calculate the limit of h of x as x approaches 2. Now, how would you calculate that now? First of all, what are they asking us to calculate? Well, you would need to remember your knowledge of limits. Okay? So they ask us to calculate the limit of h of x as x approaches 2. Okay? That is how you'd write it in terms of the limit notation. All right? In terms of limit notation, that is how you'd write it. Okay? Now, remember that they gave us the function h of x. So this is equal to the limit. The function h of x they gave us was x minus 2 all cubed in the numerator. x minus 2 all cubed divided by divided by e to the power of minus x. All right, so we're calculating the limit of, of that as x approaches 2. Good. Now, remember when you're calculating limits, we have to use direct substitution, okay? So we we'll substitute x as 2 into the function here. What do we get? Well, I recognize here, in the brackets here, I will have a 2 minus 2 raised to the power 3, right? I know that 2 minus 2 is 0, okay? And in the denominator, I will have e to the minus 2, okay, which is going to be a constant. So what I really have is 0 divided by a constant, which is actually 0. So I can say that this is equal to 0. All right, and that is the answer for the limit. Good, but we're not finished yet because the question said that we are to interpret our answer. Interpret our answer. All right, now I told about four or five Cape Integrated Mathematics students to do this question and part two, and part three seemed to be a challenge, okay? Especially the part that says to interpret your answer, all right? Students are struggling to interpret their answer. Now, how would you interpret your answer for the limit, all right? Well, let us go back to the question. Remember, the question told us that H, all right, it says where h is the depth in meters of the seabed below the surface of the sea, and x is the horizontal distance in kilometers from O, right? So we would need to recall that information in order to do our interpretation, all right? So you would have to know that. Okay, so let me just scroll back down here, all right? Now, let me just write a note for you here, okay? This is not included in the solution, but just to write a note for you that the limit, right? We just calculated the limit of h of x as x approaches two to be equal to zero, right? Now, this same statement, can be written as, so this can be written as h of x approaches zero as x approaches two, all right? These are saying the same thing, okay? So when you're doing your interpretation now, you're going to have to write it in terms of limit terminology, right? So you have to remember what H represents, what X represents, all right? And write your interpretation in terms of your limit knowledge. Okay. So remember that these are the definition of limits that you should recall. Okay. 
So let me just write my interpretation here now. So interpretation, interpretation, good. So remember here, right? We're saying that h of x approaches zero as x approaches two. How would we interpret that now? Remember h represents what? the depth of the seabed below the surface of the sea, right? So h of x approach is zero means the depth, the depth of the seabed, the depth of the seabed below the surface, below the surface of the sea, is approaching zero. All right? And that statement would, would be enough to represent h of x approaches zero. All right? Then we say as x approaches two. Now remember that x represents the horizontal distance, all right, in kilometers. So we're going to say as the horizontal, all right, so let me just scroll down a bit here. So as the horizontal distance, as the horizontal distance approaches, so the arrow means approaches, all right, approaches two kilometers, all right? So let me just write 2km for short. Okay, 2km. All right, that is our interpretation. So h of x approaches zero as x approaches two can be interpreted as the depth of the seabed below the surface of the sea is approaching zero as the horizontal distance approaches two kilometers. All right, and that is our interpretation. Okay, I hope that was clear enough. So we're finished with part two of the question. All right, now we're gonna do part three now, which says if the derivative of the, der the derivative of h prime, right, the derivative of h, which is h prime is given by that, and we are to find the slope of the seabed at the point A. All right, now what is the derivative. So remember now that the derivative is the slope of the tangent line at the point A, right? So it's the slope of the tangent line at that point A, this point right here, all right? This point here, we're talking about the, the tangent, the gradient of the tangent at that point, okay? Good. So first, before we calculate the slope, let us find the coordinate here. All right, we know that the coordinate for the point A is zero, all right, comma, negative eight. All right, now you might be wondering, how did I get that negative eight? And I got it by substituting x as zero into the function h here, all right? You don't necessarily need the y value or the y coordinate, all right? But just to show you that you could easily calculate it by substituting x as zero into the function h that was given, all right? Good. So to find the slope of the seabed at the point a, we would need to substitute x as zero into the derivative given, all right? Good. Now, what I want you to notice is that if I were to sketch a tangent line here, all right? Right. Yes, that is a sketch of my tangent line, right? If I were to sketch that tangent line now, Clearly, you can see that the line is going to have a 
positive gradient or a positive slope, right? Slope is another word for gradient, okay? So this tangent line here is going to have a positive slope, okay? Good, it is important to know that because of the, the line is sloping upwards, good. We know that if a line were sloping downwards, then it means that we would have a negative slope, right? So it is important to know that we are expected to obtain a positive slope after we substitute x as zero into the derivative, okay? Good. So let us use the derivative that was given, all right? Just use the, the derivative that, that was given and calculate the slope at the point A. So this is part three, solution, all right? Now they gave us h prime of x as x minus two all squared multiplied by x plus one, x minus one, sorry. All right, x minus one multiplied by e to the power of x. Okay, let's just check to ensure that, that is what was given. All right, so x minus two r squared times x minus one times e to the x. Yes, that is what was, that was what they gave us, right? Good. Okay, so I'm now going to substitute x as zero. All right, so substitute x as zero into h prime. All right, so you will get h prime of zero is equal to zero minus two r squared times zero minus one times e to the power of zero. Okay, now zero minus two is minus two squared times zero minus one is a minus one and e to the power of zero, all right, is one. You should know that, right? If you're not sure, you could use a calculator as well. Okay, now this is going to be equal to negative two squared is four, all right, multiplied by negative one. Okay, so you have negative one here, multiplied by one, which we know is a negative one. And negative one multiplied by the four will give us a negative four. So h prime of zero is equal to negative four. But hold on, we got a negative gradient. And remember, let's go back up here. Remember, we stated that the gradient of this tangent line must give me a positive gradient, right? Or a positive slope. So how come did I get a negative gradient here? Well, I don't know who is setting these Cape Integrated Mathematics questions. However, this derivative given here, right here, that, that, that derivative is actually incorrect, okay? Because when I worked out the question, I was saying, but hold on, how come am I getting a negative gradient? And this gradient should be positive, right? So what I did was to manually compute the derivative of h of x, right? And I recognize that there was an error, all right? So it shouldn't have been a negative one here. It shouldn't have been a negative one here. It should have been a positive one instead, all right? That was the error, okay? So if students did this, okay? If students did this in the examination, they should recognize that something is wrong because they got a negative gradient when the gradient of the tangent line should be positive. Okay, good. So let us just erase the work in here and compute the actual gradient. So this should be a plus one, all right? That should be a plus one instead of a minus one. So if you calculate the derivative of h, okay, you will recognize that that is where the error lies. 
okay? So it's still the same concept, substitute x as zero into the derivative above, all right? So you will get h prime of zero is equal to zero minus two, all squared, multiplied by a zero plus one times e to the power of zero. All right, so this is now equal to zero minus two is minus two. You're squaring that times zero plus one is one. And remember we stated that e to the power of zero is one. So h prime of zero is equal to one times one is one, right? Multiplied by a negative two squared. Anytime we square a negative number, we'll get a positive number. So negative two squared is a positive four. All right, now that is correct because we know that we are to obtain a positive slope or a positive gradient for this tangent line here. All right, good. So that is the end of this past paper question. All right, now before you go, let me just show you the actual graph of this function h of x. Right? I'm going to show you the actual graph. So let me just share my screen with you here. All right. Good. So you're supposed to be seeing my screen now. So this black curve that you see here, right, that is my function h of x, which is x minus 2r cubed over e to the power of minus x. All right. So this is my mathematics software that I'll be using. So remember, we have our x axis here. All right. This that's remember x represents the horizontal distance in kilometers. All right, good. So let us now look at the gradient, right? And we have our y axis, which represents the depth of the seabed in meters, right? The depth of the seabed below the surface of the sea in meters. Good. So, what I'm going to do is to draw a tangent line at the point A. Okay, at the point A. That is my tangent line here. All right, clearly you can see that. Good. Now remember for differentiation when you're finding the derivative, right? It is what? It is the gradient of the tangent line at the point A. All right. Now, if I were to use a coordinate geometry approach, all right? and calculate the gradient of that tangent line, it would still be equal to four, okay? I'm just going to use my software here to show that it is four, all right? So here it is, my gradient comes up, m is equal to four. We normally use m to represent gradient, right? So m is equal to four, okay? Good. So Remember that we stated that the limit of h of x as x approaches two is equal to zero, right? And you can clearly see that, right? You can clearly see that as well. So let me take off the tangent line and the gradient. Good. But just now look at it. I'm approaching two from the left, right? If you remember your knowledge from limits, in order for the limit of h of x as x approaches two to be defined, it means that the limit of h of x as x approaches two from the left, must be equal to the limit of h of x as x approaches two from the right. So if I approach two from the right, from the left here, sorry, right? If I approach two from the left here, you recognize that I, as I approach two, I am approaching to the value zero, right? And if I am up here now, I'm to the right of two, this is two from the right, and I'm approaching two, you recognize that I'm approaching the value zero. So my answer indeed was correct, all right? So my value was actually zero for real. Good. So yes, so this is the actual graph of the function h. And just to clarify that our answers were actually correct, all right? So let me go back to our screen here, right? So that is the end of this past paper question, all right? If it was clear enough for you, please ensure to like up the video and comment down below, all right? And you can also share the video with your friends. If you have any questions at all, 
please do not hesitate to ask, right? You can ask them in the comment section down below. All right, I'm Mr. Garth Reed, student ambassador in the University of Technology, Jamaica, and I'm a mathematics teacher in training in the School of Mathematics and Statistics. <laughs> I thank you for joining.